me 10 the word the way and the truth i'm prophetess trish here and i am super excited as always about the word of encouragement that god has given me to share with you on today i'm telling you if you give me 10 minutes of your time I will make it worth your while. This word on today is here to challenge you to get your mind to thinking just a little bit more about who God has called you to be, about whether or not if you are walking 110% in your purpose, walking 110% in your calling, 110% in the anointing that God has placed on your life. So guess what? The title of this episode is, Who Are You? Who are you? That is the question for today. And as I think about this question, I'm reminded of the scripture, and actually scriptures, in the book of Acts. And it's Acts the 19th chapter, the 11th through the 15th verse. In these verses, we meet a man, a dynamic, prolific, anointed man of God by the name of Paul. And see, I have to tell you this because Paul was so anointed, as the scripture says, that he didn't even have to be in a place. As he went through a place, his virtue was left behind. What do you mean by virtue, prophetess? His virtue, as in the power, the anointing that was on his life, was actually left behind if he touched any little thing, like a handkerchief or a scarf. The anointing was so strong that the virtue was left on these items. And when the people touched those things, if they had demons, the demons flee. They were delivered in the name of Jesus because of the anointing that Paul left behind. If someone was sick and they laid hands on the handkerchief, they were made whole instantly. Why? Because of the anointing that was on Paul's life. You see, Paul was a man who knew exactly who he was in God. He was a man who knew exactly what he was called to be, what it was that he was called to do. Paul understood his purpose. So that's my challenge for you today as we're talking to think about what is your purpose? What is it that God has for you? Because guess what? What God has for you is for you. It's up to you to tap into it. It's up to you to be that anointed vessel that can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. It's up to you to be that prophet, that teacher, that evangelist, that apostle. It is up to you. So my challenge today is to challenge you to tap in at 110%. And also in these scriptures, we see Paul, but we also see some more men by the name of the seven sons of Sceva. These men actually wanted everything that Paul had, the anointing that was on Paul's life. They sat, they watched Paul, they listened to him, they saw the dynamic things that he was doing, and they wanted that same anointing. They wanted to be Paul instead of being them. So let me tell you what happened. Because they wanted to be imitators of Paul, they tried to do the exact same things that Paul did, but they just weren't ready. They weren't ready to, to challenge demons, to see demons flee because they didn't have the same anointing that Paul had. So what happened when they tried to do that? They got a beat down in the natural. The demon spoke to the seven sons of Sceva and he said, now Paul I know and Jesus I know, but who in the world are you? And after the demon challenged the seven men, we got one demon and we got seven men. After he challenged those seven men, he gave them a beat down that Mike Tyson just couldn't handle. If them, the Holy Field couldn't help him. And, and I'm telling you, it was such a beat down that they just ran scared. Scared, scared, scared. Because why? They were not ready. They had not identified who they were. They did not know who they were called to be. They weren't ready for that anointing. All they knew is they saw someone who was doing some awesome things and they thought they could do it by imitating Paul. But how many of you know that there is a process that we all have to endure in order to tap into everything that God has for us? 
So I ask you, are you willing to embrace that process? Are you willing to give this thing 110% so that you can be everything that God has called you to be? Now, I, I want to share with you how to not get a beat down by some demons. How is it that you can avoid a beat down in the spirit as well as the natural? You have to understand that the anointing that Paul possessed, when we say anointing, what that means is that there is a supernatural empowerment that was upon his life that wasn't given to him by himself, but it was given to him by God. So when we talk about anointing, we're talking about the supernatural empowerment given by God to do exactly what he has called to you to do. That is the power to accomplish anything that you set your mind to do. You know, if you want to heal the sick, if you want to raise the dead, that is what your anointing is able to allow you to do. Because let me tell you, when you think you can't, know that it's the enemy. The enemy wants to just get your mind going into to, to disbelief, to not believe that you can do everything that God says that you can do. But God tells us in his word that we will do even greater things than Jesus did. So I have to ask you, who are you? Are you a person that's walking in your uh, everything that God has given you 110%? Or are you someone who is quenching the spirit of God? That's something to think about. If you're not walking in your full anointing, if you're not walking in your calling, whatever it is that God has placed on your life, then you're actually quenching the spirit of God. Because he says in his word, I know the plans that I have for you. I know them. I plan to prosper you. But guess what? We are not tapping into that prosperity because we're not tapping into everything that God wants us to be. So we have to ask ourselves, what is it that's keeping us from tapping in to being the person that God wants us to be. And as I went before the Lord, I asked God, what is it, Lord, that's holding your people, that's keeping them stagnant, that's keeping them in bondage, that's keeping them from knowing exactly who they are in you? And the one thing, the number one thing that the Holy Ghost gave me, he said, work, 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 just all kinds of work. I'm not just talking about work on the job, but I'm talking about about busy work. If you're not working on your job, you're working in the house. You got to cook. You got to clean. You got to do tons of things. The kids need to be here. The kids need to be there. The husband needs this. The wife needs that. It's just tons of things that keep us from tapping in to being all that God has us to be. And God said the number one thing is we're so busy. Why can't we just sit on ourselves down and just tap into what God wants us to tap into? And I'm going to tell you something. By the end of the day, when it's time to give God some time to give him your all, you probably got about 10 minutes left where you can just actually study your word and pray without falling asleep. Because guess what? By the end of the day, instead of you reading your word, your word is actually reading you. Instead of praying, you're actually dreaming. So it's like God is saying, I want so much more from my children. I want so much more from these anointed vessels who are not doing what I have purposed for them to do. And God gave me this scripture. He said, this is what's hindering them from their anointing. And he said, daughter, tell them what, what was read in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. And Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, we meet two women. We meet Mary and we meet Martha. Now see, Jesus had come into the house of, of, of Mary and Martha was the one that was busy working. And Martha was so busy working, she got so mad. She said, now, now Lord, don't you see that my sister Mary is not helping? Helping me clean this house and get the house situated. I'm summarizing, but you can go back and read the scripture for yourself. And Jesus said, now, now Martha, Mary is doing what is right, but you just busy doing all this other stuff that don't even matter. He said, Martha, you're worried about the wrong thing. We are worried about the wrong things in life. We prioritize everything else before God. And God is saying, you got it wrong. You got it so wrong. Give me your time. Give me that time of worship, that time of praise. 
so that you can be all that I would have you to be. So my challenge to you today is do you know who you are? Or are you a person that is quenching the Spirit of God? How are you quenching the Spirit of God? By giving all this other stuff. Work, 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 work. More time than you're giving God. I'm telling you, it's time out for just being busy, busy, busy. But it is now time to be busy about our Father's business. So I challenge you, know who you are. Give God 110% of you because that's when you can fully walk in your anointing. That's when you can fully walk in your purpose. Well, you heard my bell. That means my time is up. I pray that you have been empowered on today and this episode of Give Me 10 to know exactly who you are. God bless each of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until the next time, give me 10. God bless. Prophetess Trish. She was all about kingdom.